Welcome to Travel in Style, a podcast created to inspire travel, have fun, and give a unique perspective on how to do all of the above through the eyes and lens of travel expert and award-winning photographer and publisher, Jill Pater. Jill has worked in over 100 countries on assignment and has published 15 books on architecture, design, travel, and gastronomy. Today's show is brought to you by Calpac, a lifestyle luggage and travel accessory brand. To find out more on Calpac, you can visit calpactravel.com, and to find out more on Jill, you can visit jillpater.com. Hello, and welcome back to Travel in Style. I'm your host, Kevin, with my good friend, Sam. Hello. How's it going, Sam? You know, it's uh, it's going Hanging in there. Oh, awesome. I'm hanging. Awesome. Uh, we are back again with Travel in Style, um, sponsored by Calpac. And as usual, we have our resident travel expert, Jill Pater, with us. How's it going, Jill? It's going great. Thank you. Awesome, awesome. So today, right, today, you're going to take us to Namibia. I am. Of which I have basically zero idea of where it is, what it is, what goes on there. So I need you to basically tell me everything. Sure. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. Well, Namibia is located on the southern part of the African continent, okay. so it's just north of South Africa on the on the west coast. And it's one of the most beautiful, in my opinion, most beautiful countries that I've ever visited anywhere, but in Africa as well. And it has the lowest population density in the world. It's also one of the safest countries in Africa to travel to. So it's one of the few, I would say, in Africa that you can really, you know, rent a car and travel around right. easily and safely by yourself. And uh, so how was how was traveling around yeah, how long by is yourself? It was it was definitely an adventure. I was there with one of my good friends who's South African and we rented a car. I mean, we we were working with a travel agent based out of Johannesburg, South Africa. She helped us kind of get some of the lodges we stayed at and rent the car and, and do some of the the basic um, travel arrangements. And we didn't really know going into it. We asked her, like, do you need a four by four? Can you get away with a regular sedan? She's like, oh, yeah, you'll be fine in a sedan. So we go to the car rental place and we get we pick up this car and it's a brand new gold Toyota Camry. Oh, it's just a loud we're in a gold car. car. We're in a gold car. Okay. And, and we're laughing. And, you know, of course, we bought insurance so that basically we never had to bring the car back. If the car didn't make it, we right. wouldn't be on the line for anything. That's good. And we did. We traveled around. And one of the things we didn't know going into it is that the vast majority of the roads within the country are gravel. So we were not wow. on paved roads. So we kind of planned the trip. In this under, gold car. In this gold car. gold car. But we thought, Dope. thinking that most of these roads are paved, like most of the major roads are paved, and a lot of them are not. So that did. That added a little time to our trip, but it made for uh, a very good adventure. <laughs> was yeah. was actually getting it to Namibia hard? It is. It, again, it's similar to, you know, we talked about going to Cape Town, yeah. South Africa. So essentially, like most of the flights, you'll go through Johannesburg and then take a flight up to the capital city, Windhoek. Um, and so that it is an African, you know, all of our African, unfortunately, our Middle East, right. Africa from the U.S., it's those are it's longer flights. Sure. Yeah, those are 18 plus hour flights. Well worth it, though. Yes, definitely. I mean, there is there is no place in the world like Namibia. There's, well, that's there's a, just yeah. no there is no comparison. That's what I was just going to ask. What makes it so special? So its topography, I think, makes it incredibly unique. So it's very kind of desert mm -hmm. Desert esque oriented, right. the majority of the country. And we were there in winter, so things were particularly, um, they felt more deserty than, the, you know, less lush than they probably norm normally would as well. But I think just the expanse of landscape that's untouched is so rare. Like they, their skeleton coast, which goes along the west coast of the country, it's, it's uninhibited. You can't really touch down. You have to take a small aircraft over it to mm -hmm. even see it. And so it's just these massive, if you imagine California being a state of massive rolling dunes into the ocean, I mean, it's just unthinkable, right? Like right. every, every, every place and... this beautiful is so populated and so mm -hmm. has so much tourism and maybe a dozen. It's right. just you know, very low population density. There is tourism there. Um, but again, even, you know, tourists can't fill up the entire country. Sure. Yeah. So with there being gravel roads mm -hmm. and low population density, mm -hmm. why why choose to go there? Was it for work or was it for... Did you know about it at yeah. the time? Yeah. yeah, I think I was at the time, I was looking for, I knew I wanted to go on safari and I had loved, I had such a great experience in South Africa, loved Cape Town and wanted another you know, kind of a new African experience and was looking around. We were considering Botswana. We were considering Botswana and Namibia. And we just narrowed it down. We started looking at it. Uh, you know, you see photos of it and it's absolutely tremendous. And, and then we just figured with everything that we're going to do in Namibia, it made sense to just focus on that country versus trying to fit in, you know, multiple countries on that trip. 
Were you there for work or pleasure? Both. Both. Um, I did do some shooting while I was there, but it was it was mainly a pleasure, you know, interest that drove the trip. And then, you know, a, a lot of the images have been used in editorial and in, and in books since. Yeah. Yeah. Especially since you guys were in a car, I feel like there was a little bit more freedom there to adventure around and just, you know, be a little bit spontaneous. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It was definitely adventure travel. Our car was so full of like dust. I think we had more <laughs> sand in the car than we did in the oh, desert wow. at the end of the trip. It right. was Well, that was speaking fun. of dust, uh, yes. what was packing like? And how did you prepare for the safari life? Well, the nice thing about safari life in general is that you're you're in the same kind of clothes all the time. You okay. usually don't have to. I mean, you'll switch clothes after the day if if you need to. But it's a, you're switching the same type of clothes. You don't need you know really like evening wear. Everyone pretty <laughs> much wears the standard when you think of safari clothes. That's exactly what people I think wear. Of cargo pants. Yeah, yeah cargo pants. Khaki, navy. Dark. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The uh, car- the oh green. Yeah. <laughs> yeah the your green hat, cargo like, pants. Pants, the hat, the white shirts, you know, the white kind of light linen shirts. Yeah. I feel like you could still make that cute. So that, yeah, you can. It's I think like, it's a great look, it's just actually. Really- <laughs> yeah. And so that's a very, for me, that's a very easy pack because you don't need, you know, all these different types of clothes. And all the safari lodges will launder your clothes. So you oh, don't need okay. to bring a ton of things. And oftentimes on safaris, sometimes people take small aircraft between different camps and things because the roads are so rough. And when you take those small aircraft, they have very limited luggage. So it's usually 10 kilograms. So that's not a lot. And so you have to, oftentimes you have to really pack low for safaris. You have to pack with the intention of having things laundered. There's no other way to do it. Do you know that before you go? Like you research yes. that? And- yeah. I mean, you you kind of, they should tell you that. You're usually booking yeah. it through some type of provider and they should definitely tell you that. But so they don't show up like your large check <laughs> yeah. luggage. But recently mm-hmm. I was on a trip with my sister and we didn't, you know, it was kind of a last minute thing and we didn't, you know, we kind of kept getting these requirements late. And when we saw the 10 kilogram, we were both like, ah, oh, you know, 10, 10 kilograms <laughs> like is not a, a lot of weight. And that's it. Yeah, pretty I just, much. Yeah, I don't even know what that. But there's a like. certain freedom to that, too, because you're so taken care of when you're at these lodges and, you know, everybody, everybody's in the same kind of clothes and things. So there's no, you don't feel like you're out of place in yeah. any yeah. way, Underdressed or, or overdressed. Exactly. So uh, the lodges, like, where did you guys stay and how did you choose that? Do you go through a booking agent? or We did. So so the one thing with with safari lodges in general, you can't typically. There are some that are not this way, but you can't typically just book them online. Like okay. you usually have to call or you know email somebody, and they they help you kind of plan the trip, plan your trans because they're also planning or helping you plan your transportation in and out. So we went through, um, in this case, a South African travel agent. Um, who helped us just make the bookings, kind of give us an idea of how long we needed to spend at each place, the distance, driving distance between places, um, and then the car rental. So you you keep saying safari, right? Mm-hmm. And I know you guys rented a car and were driving, but are you talking like the type of safari where you actually see you know, lions and giraffes and all that. Yes, yeah, so you guys we, are driving that, right? Or do you have? Well, actually, guides? well, that another very unique <laughs> actually, part of like, a very, driving next to a lion. Actually, like, yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah. No, actually, one of the parts of Namibia that's very unique is we did drive through. So the northern part of the country is a national park called Atosha National Park, and you can drive through. You can also take. You can also do this via tours that's and other wild. things. So you actually, we actually drive through the entire park. And yeah, you're driving by giraffes. It's a very, it's a massive park. You're driving by giraffes and you're driving by animals. And, and so it is, it's totally weird. You know, yeah, like, like, there's a giraffe. Are you freaked yeah. out a little bit? Yeah. Like, if you well, see you a can't, cheetah and it's like. You know, yeah, you can't. I mean, there are definitely safety things. You have to stay, in the, yeah, have right, to stay right. in the car. You can never separate yourself yeah. from the car unless mm-hmm. you're in like It's gravel areas. roads, but there's like a pathway. Yes. Right? Okay. Yes, for sure. You could sure. just imagine. You just accidentally wander off and like. Right. And then or... while you're at the lodges, they usually take you on the game drives. Right. Well, you're, you, you'll see more of the cheetah, the, okay. you know, uh, the harder element, the harder animals to see on the road, so to speak. Right. And you, I mean, what Kevin was asking is perfect because I think of safaris and we have these like typical ideas of what it's like. But uh, what else surprised you when you were out there in Namibia that, um, you didn't expect. Well, I think what most people, I think oftentimes when we think of safari, we either think of like South African safari in Kruger National Park or the East African safari. So Tanya, Tanzania, and we've, we've kind of seen those pictures in like the lush jungle. I think what's so surprising about Namibia was just the vastness of the land and it being kind of desert and it being this very beautiful kind of monochromatic 
levels of like beige and sand and things. So it was like so big and so vast and just no people. I mean, even though you know that going in, when you're out when you're out and you, you're driving down the road for hours and you don't see a single person, right. it's kind of crazy, you is know. And you're driving through, a or is that peaceful? It's very peaceful. Amazing, yeah. That's very not peaceful. Like, like One with nature, film. except like, when you have a flat <laughs> tire that it gets a little bit. Oh, right. What do yeah. we do? Because there's a cheetah right there. Right. <laughs> Right. Like just changing the spare. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah and at me. one point, we were on. We decided to do this day trip. We thought it was going to be four hours, and it ended up being like almost a six to eight hour drive. And there's no like convenience stores. There were no, right. you know. And so we were we were kind of starving because we had snacks with us, but yeah. we didn't realize we were going to be kind of gone this long from the lodge. And so we stopped and we asked. There was this museum kind of like museum place where they had a lot of sand indigenous art on the rocks that had been drawn in so that's where we were going and we figured this is a pretty big site that they would have you know refreshments or something there and so we asked and they're like no sorry we don't have anything and we're like well where would be the closest thing and they're and they said well our family you know killed killed something like a couple weeks ago and we still have it roasting there's that and we're just like well So, no so there's really, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just so like the snack. distances are so big and, you know, like that was just something that, that would wow. never happen here. You never drive for eight hours. And actually in most places in the world where you wouldn't run into people or right. food or any anything. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. Right. So, I mean, there are some things that you can't fully prepare for, but as far as documentation or just like getting in and out of Africa, is there anything that you have to be aware of just to really be prepared to visit? I think just in general, um, you know, certain African countries require visas, others do not. Namibia does not require a visa um, for U.S. citizens, or a lot of them will have visa on arrival. Um, and, And so, you know, you don't really have to worry about that so much. I think it's just kind of knowing, you know, your transportation options. And like Namibia, it's like knowing that it is this very large country. It's not super populated. So you, and it's not like super touristy. So just kind of knowing that, having that in the back of your mind. So we're going from one place to the other. If we stop, we'll have to either pack a lunch or bring something along with us because there aren't, you know, we're not going to come along places we're going to stop. Yeah. Um, so I think that's just the biggest thing is having a sense of where you're going and what, what it's like to travel within that destination and what, mm-hmm. you, what you might need to kind of plan on in between. Yeah. Cost-wise, um, not only like how was it like, you know, purchasing your ticket over there, but also how was it cheap, expensive, affordable while you were there? So I would say Namibia is in between. Again, you have like with a longer international flight to a not what I would call like such a popular destination. You know, the flight is obviously it's not super cheap to, to fly there. Um, and then your lodges tend to be because the lodges for the most part are inclusive. You're eating at the lodge because there's nowhere else, to, you know, okay, there's nowhere else to it. eat. So you tend to eat at the lodges. The lodges like take care of everything else too, like your laundry services and your game drives and everything else. So they're not, you know, it's not really super budgety that way. But once you're there, everything is in kind of included in that fee. So okay. I, I, I would say it's moderate. There are there are ways you can save. Certainly there are ultra, ultra luxury places you can stay and you can do all fly-ins. So you're just flying from, you're flying in small Cessnas from one part of the country to the next. And so that would be kind of the ultimate luxury. But there are like, you know, certainly more um, affordable places to stay, affordable lodges too as well. What's the uh, what's the nightlife like? In the <laughs> There's no nightlife. Yeah. <laughs> is there much no, at all? Like, no, you're. <laughs> it, it's really down to the lodge you stay at, and that's why I think, especially in traveling to Africa, if you're doing you know these types of safaris, to keep in mind is that the lodge you stay at is responsible for kind of everything you're right. going to be doing, and so. Um, you know, from the drives to the level of, you know, accommodations they have to the food, everything's there. And so it's something to keep in mind, like, you might want to upgrade right. a little right. bit on that because it Just is have more it's, options. It, yeah, more options. Like, yeah. I, I know you like to mix up the way you travel and kind of mm-hmm. where you go. But it, do you prefer that, you know, kind of where if you go to a Namibia and it's like you're going to one place and that's really kind of, you know, all of your entertainment, your activity – Versus, you know, a London or wherever, there, wherever there's a lot of stuff going on. Do you prefer one type of traveling, you know, versus another? I, I like a mix of both. Yeah. I mean, I, I think for me, I'm more, I am a city person. I do like being out in the country. And this this was definitely like way out there. an epic trip. Right. It was epic. Like That's I wouldn't, great. I wouldn't change it 
for the world. Mm -hmm. Uh, But I wouldn't be able to, that being said, I wouldn't be able to do this type of trip back to back every time. It's kind of a once in a life. And you kind of have to, I think, know what you're getting into and and be geared up for that type of trip. But it's a magnificent part. There's nothing else like it, I think, because everything else is so either developed in the world or so touristy or so populous. So to be like out in the wild like this with animals and with you know, just all these different landscapes and to have it so natural and be just like completely unruined by humanity is, mm-hmm. is like a pretty big thing. Yeah. That's why that's why when you said peaceful, that's that was a good word because you are it's just one with nature <laughs> yeah. and one with animals. Is it is it hard like if you go to a place, you know, as remote as Namibia and you are doing some shooting, like some work, is it hard to stay focused just because there is, I mean, the sights have to be amazing and like everything you're seeing and taking in, is it hard to it's, actually do your work? It, it's actually easy because it's, you are just so much, everything right. is based around the landscape. So you're shooting tons of landscapes mm-hmm. and there's a part of you that's just like, you just want to capture it because you've never seen anything like it and you want to remember that forever. And so capturing that's easy. And then the other element are these lodges, which oftentimes are, you know, very beautiful, very unique and and so kind of shooting those interiors and exteriors, it's just kind of a part of the trip. And the one thing about safari-type trips is that you have a lot of downtime, right? You're usually doing probably a game drive in the morning and maybe one in the evening. But a lot of it is just, like, about relaxing and being in nature and not on the go, 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 go. So it makes it really, in a way, for me, easy because I'm not – there's nothing else really competing for your time. To distract you. Right. Um, how long would you recommend anybody staying? Depends how how much of the country you want to see. Okay. I would say, you know, because it is a longer flight in and out, um, I would say, you know, definitely 10 days to two weeks. 10 days to two weeks. And yeah. What, what, At a minimum. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What is like the best time of the year to go to Namibia? So it's also Southern Hemisphere. So we were there in October and that was kind of their shoulder season. Okay. But I would say similar to South Africa, like November to March, November to February is going to be like the key, their key summertime. What was that climate like when you were there? I mean, is it like it was. 70- Beautiful. It was. Right. It, they're just coming out of winter, sure. um, so it's kind of like their spring. So things aren't as lush, but I actually really love that in terms of the desert because it just gave it this yeah. beautiful, um, very kind of you know like monochromatic tone yeah. to it that was mm-hmm. just like stunning to photograph. Yeah. Um, and then the weather, it, it was definitely warm during the day and then cooled off at night. So it was, it was pretty in my world. That's pretty perfect. Yeah, especially photographing it. Yeah, love to see those photos. Yeah, and the stars, like, you know, when you're in those oh, kind of places at night are yeah. pretty amazing. That's the so, yeah, that's the nightlife. Oh, yeah. Just and, looking up. <laughs> and, yeah, at the lodge, you know, you're relaxing. You have – they bring in, like, amazing, mostly South African wines and yeah. things. So it's just, like, chilling out and relaxing. It's like a must-see, must-go, yeah. like, once-in-a-lifetime thing. Yes, to do. for sure. Amazing. So – Thank you for taking us to Namibia. Sure. I love Namibia now. I'm convinced. Are you going to go? You're going to go on a safari? I'm going to every place. <laughs> every Jill place recommends. we talk about, we're going. Exactly. Like, like exactly how she yeah. did it, too. Um, so it's now time for Jill's packing hack of the day. And we're going to talk about, I mean, you were talking about in Namibia how that are, it's not so accessible Right. For like convenience stores or liquor sure. stores or gas stations. So, what are these comfort items that you uh, find yourself bringing from trip to trip? Sure. So, for every trip, I think it makes a huge difference having there's certain creature comfort things that we all love. And I think having those in your onboard bag, or if you travel carry on only, it would obviously be with you. But even if you check luggage, having certain things in your carry on board, it just it gives you a sense of home without, you know, while you're enjoying the travel and a, a sense of comfort on your trip. You know, it's kind of like a known thing as you're going into the unknown. And for me, that's things like there's certain teas I love, dark dark chocolate for sure. I have my certain like gluten-free bars that I pack. Mm-hmm. But even like having, I love, I load up my Kindle with like tons of books, having headphones, having certain music. Um, you could be like your airplane socks or your, you know, your eye mask, but just certain creature comfort things that you really love. My yeah. sneakers. And, and that you oh. know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I bring my sneakers. Don't need it's all always closed with you, Kevin. Um, just having those things with you, it just gives you, because you, when you travel, you do tend to have a lot of downtime mm-hmm. and it's a great time to catch up on things yeah. you might have wanted to read or shows you want to watch. It could be TV. It could be podcasts, like travel and style. (laughs) Um, 
And so just having those things with you, then you, yeah. it just, it gives you a certain level of comfort. Sure. Um, I always have, like for me, snacks are very important. <laughs> so having like, you know. Snacks, so snacks are, that's very important. Very, yeah. I get it. Your things. It you know? allows you to not get, um, what is it, homesick. Sure. I yes. feel like you need those certain things because things could get a little... I mean, you're out you know, there. You're like, just, yeah. You're out there. <laughs> yes. Yes. There's got to be like one little thing to remind you of home, right. you know. Yes. All right. Well, well, Jill, as always, thank you again for uh, giving us insight on Namibia. That is a, a, I mean, it's just wild that you have spent a significant amount of time there. Uh, sounds like an amazing place to travel to. So yeah. thank you. Thank you. As always, check back with us uh, t- in two weeks for the next episode of Travel in Style. You can learn more about Jill Pater on jillpater.com. And to read more about each destination, please visit Calpac's blog, destinationcalpac.com, for Jill's tips and amazing photography. Find more about our podcast, Travel in Style, on iTunes, YouTube, and SoundCloud. If you enjoyed this show, please subscribe, rate, and send us a nice review. Happy travels!